I'm not speaking just to talk about myself. I'm speaking because I want a result out of it. I want people to understand what the issues are, what's at stake, and then I want them to get engaged. Um, and I, honestly, I don't know how to speak without passion <laughs> because it's not, you know, it is such a piece of who I am, such a part of who I am. Um, and that comes through, I think, in the speeches. And, and um, for me, you know, finding a way to really build to a peak and, and then be able to use that peak for something, to be able to challenge people to do something or to think something, um, to really act, I think, is part of, part of all of the speaking I do. And it's not always easy because so much of what we're talking about is really traumatic stuff, you know, difficult issues, complex issues, politically challenging issues. And so to move people through the trajectory, sometimes in what is a very short period of time, 15 or 20 minutes, you know, to start with what the problem is, to, to go to a place of inspiration, really, and vision, um, and then to end with a call of some sort to action is sort of how I think about structure usually. Of, of Even if I'm not thinking how do I structure a 10 minute speech, I think that is what ends up coming out. So as you said, an introduction to the problem, a description of the problem, a resolution and a call to action? Um, resolution I is, is right, though I guess I would say it's sort of a vision. It's a vision because it's not just about a solution. I try, I'm not always successful, but I try in most of my speeches to present a picture of what the world could be. And that is slightly different than a solution, which I think about as more pragmatic. And I do talk about solutions as well, but I feel like the purpose of most speeches is about informing, educating, and inspiring. Uh, you may have heard of Monroe's motivated sequence. Mm -hmm. Sounds like this is part of what you're doing. You, you, yeah. you, you refer to the vision. Yeah. The, the idea that there, there is hope and mm -hmm. there, are, there are opportunities yeah. once you take action. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think people, you know, I do give facts, especially in a longer speech, mm -hmm. but I've learned that um, people do want information, but they need it in a way that's digestible. And for me, the stories are a really important component of any speech, if I have time, either my story or somebody else's story. Mm. Um, I never used to use my story because I was always speaking for other people. And then over the last, the, I did a uh, TEDx talk where I did oh. use my story. Um, and I think that might have been the first time <laughs> really that I did. Mm. And recently, since I've left One America, I've been using it more, partly because I feel more freed to talk about myself, whereas before I used to always feel like my charge was really to talk about other people, not myself. Um, but I do see that that's valuable because, again, it brings that very personal experience in, even if it feels a little uncomfortable sometimes. <laughs>